So we're going to be talking about Julian Assange today. That is the Australian, the sexy Australian WikiLeaks hacker um, who exposed the government, the CIA, for their nefarious uh, murders, rapes, schemes, uh, horrific war crimes that the public uh, often uh, like largely ignored. And he's been basically locked up. Is he still in an embassy or... He's like awaiting like a, like, I don't know if it's death sentence or life in prison. No. We're basically just outing the government for being monsters. He's in the UK, I think. He's currently, I think he's, yeah, he's been uh, discharged from the embassy and he's currently at a UK uh, prison. Yeah, I'm Larissa. Uh, I'm a social seven, which might mean nothing to you if you don't know anything about the Enneagram. And you don't have to know anything about the Enneagram to watch this, although we will be peppering it throughout. We will be explaining things. Uh, it's a personality typing system that helps you understand the core motivations and fears of all these different types of people, which is fantastic to know because uh, when we're talking about the, the dark evil people on the planet, you can understand how to ruin them. <laughs> and we'll be using it also to talk about people like Julian Assange, who I'm categorizing as a hero of the apocalypse, although other people don't have to agree with me. I only speak for myself and uh, talking about how these sort of hero archetypes emerge, how these type of the type of people that actually stand up and do something to try to make a difference and how that might show up in a pattern with, uh, you know, personality, behavior, psychology, whatever. Yeah. I am Veronica. I am a social self pres nine wing one. And um, I'm also interested in what is happening now currently. Um, and the, the, the motivations of the the players involved on the chessboard right now, globally, po global politics. And um, I'm excited to be participating in this call and linking um, Julian Assange to his typology and to his personality so we can shed some light on that as well. Hello, uh, I'm Victoria, that's a pseudonym. My, my type is a core six. A social six, which is, I guess, I guess you will uh, come to know later that it's the type most associated with the the sort of people who are like Julian Assange. So what else? <laughs> you you uh, tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, Jul yeah, I think uh, it, all, it is always interesting to look at uh, motivation that just doesn't stop at things like uh, power and money. There's something that's underneath that so yeah that's interesting to look at nice because the goal is not to completely subjugate afghanistan the goal is to use afghanistan to wash money out of the tax bases of the united states out of the tax bases of european countries through afghanistan and back into the hands of a transnational security office. that is the goal i.e the goal is to have an endless war not successful. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> Kudos to Veronica for being the one to point out that Julian Assange is probably in any room six wing five. Um, that was sort of a six moment, if you will. Yeah, again, like he's like exposing the government for their wretched deeds, and that's why he's being terrorized by the government. Yeah, no, I think I think um, the only back to the Enneagram thing, the only uh, missing piece from six is like the temperament part. Like I, I see him like doing a lot of uh, it is what it is. This is neutral. Like I, I don't see him uh, having that kind of strained popping vein kind of uh, six thing going on. I mean, it, it could be. It could be like there. It's just like he's kind of holding it together for the for the press or whatever. I think he feels very strongly um, about the importance of the information that he's sharing. Like he mm -hmm. feels there. Like he feels conviction, and um, there's an importance about the the quality and the kind of information that's going out. To the public like this is what he's based this is what he based wikileaks on and there is a sort of detachment 
that um, where he's letting the information speak for itself. And he said this a few times. And yeah. I think that is the, the five part of um, his personality, either as a fix or um, another aspect of his personality, or it, it could be just his core type. So. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I had to come around to six because of that neutrality, that energy that he has, but um, like what you said about, it's like, cause I was thinking about this too. It's like five, fives operate more with the abstraction metaphor and stuff. So it's like, if you think about like Stanley Kubrick, if he is a, if he's a five, like he was outing, he was outing some of the same fucking people in his movies, which I don't know if many people realize unless you go down the rabbit hole. It's like he was exposing like the elite peds and stuff in like Eyes Wide Shut. I think he got murdered, to be honest. Uh, I'm really starting off strong with this one. Um, but, <laughs> but he was doing it abstractly. Like you had to search for the truth. And uh, Julian Assange is just like he is doing it from a kind of withdrawn uh, energy, like with a withdrawn uh, gut energy and withdrawn wing, maybe. But like he's taking those secrets and those lies and the documents and but he's blasting them out into the public so he is using that five piece of like the secrets and the withholding and the, the information and then he's blasting it like a like a six yeah looking at his early like bio i think it started off as him like uh like the hacking stuff started off as an intellectual exercise like him just flexing his intellectual ability and then he stumbled upon like things he's like He's like, oh, okay, but it, but I think at the beginning it uh, it seemed like kind of playful and just like uh, him just like seeing how good his abilities are. Yeah, yeah, and I mean that is a head type thing is flexing like your your know it your know it allness your prowess your mental capacities like often mm -hmm. or a strong head head second but um right yeah and I think that um. I don't think that you have to have necessarily a motivation initially to just be like, I'm just going to go out and expose um, everybody. Um, sometimes it's like you see a particular part of information if you're a six wing five and you become fixated on that. And that becomes something that galvanizes you to continue to walk down that path and um like that space in particular six wing five is like searching through all of what is available in the network to find the one piece that is going to um that's going to like be like the dynamite it, it's gonna it's gonna be the truth and he's really big on truth like he's really big on this is the actual facts yeah, and it's all oriented towards taking down institutions and like power structures mm -hmm. and stuff. So it's like, and that and that does speak to prominent six somewhere. So that's like whether it's a wing six or a six or like a six fix, because you're aware of it. You know what I mean? Or even I guess even just like social type, which we don't have to get into right this moment. But um, yeah, because there's overlap between being a social dominant and being a six. But um, yeah. But also, like, I, I was thinking about his life, his whole life has been basically consumed by this. And it's like, he's a mart, like he's a martyr. And that is a, a super ego type. So that's one, two or six, that is sort of their <laughs> life path as being a bit of a martyr at times, like he was like jailed. He was, but the sixth version of it is like, he was jailed for individuating and actualizing, like he literally was jailed for putting the herd before himself, being the town crier and, and the whistleblower, as you pointed out, is the sixth thing. And then he was punished for it, <laughs> which is sort of the, the six pattern playing out that persecution. It's like, but his is like the tragic version of the six path. It's like, it's right. like you're being ostracized or being kicked out or turned on by the herd. And so they often don't. And then he did it. And then that literally came to pass. So the tribe turned on him, like the government turned on him, the institutions turned on him. And even like, like, like barely anybody like it's like this is a crime people talk about it but like the general public it's like why do you trust the government <laughs> it's like you should be fighting for people like julian assange to get freed like anyway i think that there's 
something incredibly valuable about what he's doing. And even as a symbolic gesture, um, the fact that there is information that is kept from the public in a strategic way by the government. And um, the fact that he is exposing that for the public as a symbol and as in a very practical way too, like the, he's not completely making it abstract, like you said with five, like there's something very like tangible about what he's doing, where he said that um, he wanted the public to go on and see for themselves what the truth is. Like he didn't want to, he didn't want to like manipulate it. He didn't want to present it in a certain way. He said, this is the truth. You can go on and make your own call. And I think that's like the height of what a six can do, a six wing five, especially a six. They're saying, this is the truth. You can see for yourself what it is. Oh, I love that. There's also, he has a focus, uh, I think in one of the videos we reviewed a while back, um, he was in an interview and someone asked him, uh, he, they asked him something about his personal life and he like, he got really like irritated and he's like, he's like, you can, you can either interview me about my, my work or, or me, you can't, you can't like ask me about both. So I think, I think this, this might be also like, a could be like a six, five thing or where where it's like uh the work speaks for itself like my work doesn't re necessarily represent me like don't ask me about myself um and and it's also kind of like a kind of an insular thing like i i don't want my personal life to be exposed or i don't want to like uh kind of let the two merge yeah there's a compartmentalization with six wing five or five wing six um in that space it's like um, an awareness of how information relates to you. And so um, keeping it depersonalized kind of keeps it separate. You know, the information is separate from who you are. Yeah, it keeps it like in a way somehow more valid. Uh, right. Like when it's, when it's, uh, well, I guess that's where the word professionalism comes from. Like when it's devoid of like the, personal touch it makes it it makes it more effective or more um real yeah yeah it's interesting yeah the six wing fives are like also more paranoid about guarding that kind of stuff too so um, yeah six wing sevens are kind of more messy and they're like they kind of i think i mean six wing fives can get like this too but it's more six wing sevens that need agreement like they need that consensus i think more because they are more extroverted in the sense that it's like to to kind of um like sixes like towards people and it's like um wanting to be part of the community and sevens more sort of like la, 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 like floating around <laughs> <laughs> and five is more like picking the one thing and then no this is the thing so if you don't yeah. Also just like, yeah, like the pattern of six wing five, like infiltrating institutions to get their information and then expose it. Like that is a real six wing five pattern that like we've even seen in these different groups where <laughs> there's some six wing fives that really like they create all these alts and uh, they try to infiltrate all these secret chat groups and discords and. <laughs> yeah, in infiltrating, but being not seen. Hmm. That's very six wing five. It's like the detective, the the investigator. I like I think the investigator fits six wing five more than what it's been typically assigned to, which is five. Yeah. I think five has a more decontextualized way of, of viewing their mental processes. Um and where the whether it's relevant or not is besides the point to them. Yeah, five wing six is more the researcher kind of role than anything because they're not really like they don't have yeah like that core piece telling them that they have to use it for the higher good or any of that also you're a good example because like you're literally <laughs> a gray square and you're a six wing five well they, like the internet of things it's it's uh if you like uh intelligent evil dust uh, scattered everywhere, <laughs> like confetti, in everything. Uh, 
So yeah, I think people will be like, oh, he's crazy. Yeah. So Julian Assange exposed the smart dust thing, which people just ignored totally. And actually this video was, was hard to find because it got pulled very quickly by the big tech overlords. Um, so I don't know, this video will probably get flagged on my YouTube. Um, but yeah, they've been spraying us with smart dust for fucking years and it's in our food and it's in all kinds of stuff. And he he will elaborate on that. I know people think this is a conspiracy theory, but if you look up into the sky, you can clearly see that there are chemtrails. So, and I just lost a bunch of people. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a big dilemma. One of our lawyers, uh, who, of course, we all have to educate them about, you know, different counter surveillance techniques. But they said, God damn it. You know what we should do? We, we should, we should like buy up some chunk of Madagascar or Patagonia or somewhere and just ban every electronic device from it. It's like a, a, a radio wave electronic, uh, well, high intensity radio wave, uh, free area because of that, uh, constant buffeting, uh, that we have by principally commercial organizations trying to harvest our interactions with the world. That's, that's the, um, so yeah, we were talking about this before because his energy and other stuff is a lot flatter, but when he's talking about things that he's actually kind of passionate about his energy sort of lights up more, which I do think is the influence of the head, like that's head type kind of stuff. Yeah, his energy is different here from what what I've seen uh, previously. Like, yeah, like his uh, his body language, mm -hmm. and also he's like ta he's wanting to teach people. Like he's talking about how he wants to like share this information. And we have to frame it and this kind of stuff. And I think that like leans also more to him being six wing five over like five wing six per se. And he's also talking about actually topics that someone like. Uh, you all know a Harari, who's a five, a deeply evil five, who I'll be doing a video on soon, um, who is, talks about the same topics but from this different perspective, which is, you know, we want to be inside of people's bodies monitoring them. Uh, and <laughs> Julian Assange is like warning us that this is what's happening. So I think, I think too, when you have over, like you have like your wing, uh, so five wing six or six wing five, it's like you have an awareness of what that type is doing. Uh, but you're just not really doing it so much, but you're like scared of it or it's your shadow or it's just like a danger zone sometimes. Yeah, yeah I think the idea of being controlled is particularly going to trigger sixes. Um, I mean, it's also like nines can do that as well, but um, controlled by specifically by information or being hacked in some way is very much like six. Um, awareness of how they can how institutions or um power can manipulate you and fives almost assume that they're going to be the ones doing the manipulating or they would prefer that almost like they want to be the ones in control oh that's a great frame yeah yeah because fives fives like are in a way intellectually superior and they know it like they see themselves above people so they don't really see themselves as victim of any as a victim of anything. They see themselves as the the orchestrators of things. Yeah, because they have like cut off their emotions, or they think they have. Um, whereas six is more like in tune with their emotions and their emotionality, mm -hmm. and that humanity piece. Where if, yeah, yeah, connection to other connection to the like the map. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. The map, yeah, the grid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the principal economic model that all these AI companies have had and the traditional uh, surveillance uh, capitalism companies have had. And the, the, the number of degrees of interaction, so what do I mean by that? Um, if, you, if you can't imagine a space of interactions, the, the number of types of interaction, the frequencies of interaction between you and everything else in the space is dramatically uh, increasing. And in a way you can consider each 
one of these degrees of freedom is, is kind of like a triangulation. So to triangu triangulate something in two dimensional space, well, okay, you just need two, two directions, uh, two signals, directional signals. Uh, but we are giving off. It's funny though, because he said basically kind of what me and Veronica said about being part of the grid, like that's kind of funny. Yeah, exactly. He just almost said the same thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, when we're talking about his instinct stacking, um, I think self-prez, when combined with the six wing five, is definitely going to heighten the sense of um, insul insularity and also a sense of how they can particularly be um, like their privacy can be um, exploited because um, self-preservations are aware of how privacy can be, uh, is it can be a problem. And also they're very practical and they're focusing on these minute details. Um, so he seems extremely fine-tuned, fine which I think is the combination of his um, instinct with his core type. Do you think that, uh, Victoria, that you could see like how um, social might influence, like a social dom might be different from um, a self-preservation dom um, in a uh, six wing five? I think with him, it's a difficult case. Like initially it was a difficult thing um, to like land on one of the two because of the, I mean, the nature of the things he's discussing. Uh, or like revealing or working with but that was also because I was I was considering him being a, a nine rather than a six however now with him being six I think he he rarely like goes into the the moral aspects of it all like I don't see him I don't see him t discussing like um how this is of like or maybe he does but he he doesn't talk about like the how do I say this? In simple terms, how evil those people are. Uh, he talks about like how it's how things aren't transparent or uh, not revealed or whatever. Like which I don't know if I'm if I'm making sense. Which seem very like dry. Like he doesn't go into the what it means for the bigger kind of like humanity of of a, of it all. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, definitely. Like, cause I think social added to six is gonna heighten that. How is it affecting people, um, especially like groups of people where I think um, it's not that he's not doing that cause I think he's self press social, um, but it's focused more on the tangible aspects of what the implications are rather than the grander, um, wider, broader um, implications to Two groups of people um it's just a little bit less of a um concern for him yeah also like the the clout piece um <laughs> he doesn't seem like <laughs> i don't know he doesn't give me the impression that he's like uh sees himself as like uh, a pilot of a movement or mm -hmm. does that i don't know if that if this is a good way to say it yeah, that's that's perfect, actually. And and for the people who are watching that aren't really familiar with Enneagram terminology, uh, there's three instincts. People have a dominant instinct. It's either social, self-preservation, or sexual. And um, and then there are combinations of those instincts called stackings, which was a, a term coined by the internet entity known as Jays. <laughs> um, so the social self-preservation stacking is often very lofty and sermonizing and um, you know, like Jordan Peterson, perhaps, or like that kind of archetype. And then self-preservation social is more community focused, like um, people-y kind of- Earthy, like uh, down to business, hands in the mud. Oh yeah, hands in the mud, that's perfect. Yeah, they're getting dirty with the people, unless they are one of the dirty people who we will be- Yeah, talking. hands in the mud, that's good. <laughs> if someone has used using a mobile phone, for example, you're probably giving off a couple of hundred of these on average per second. 
some, something like that. Maybe not, maybe not quite as, maybe, okay, maybe, maybe a dozen, perhaps. Uh, although if you do video, of course, there's vast, vast amounts more. So anyway, between dozens and, and hundreds of um, measurements, we are emanating constantly. And so if you click those together, you can effectively triangulate someone's uh, activities and behavior. And I don't think by chopping out uh, many of them or adding uh, kind of chaff, uh, cover, that you can make that much, make that much of a difference. And, and increasingly, increasingly it's less. Um, and the, in terms of the Internet of Things, there's research prototypes now, which I assume are being used by uh, intelligence agencies, of very small electronic circuits uh, that you can just put in paper or put in paint or on the, on the walls uh, that are, pa are powered by the GSM stations. And they, they operate as the GSM radio wave passes through them. It gives them enough power for a very small amount of time to do things. But obviously, that tendency is going to continue. It's not the, like the Internet of Things. It's the, it's uh, if you like uh, intelligent evil dust uh, scattered everywhere, like like confetti in everything. So I think it's increasingly hard for human beings to work out how to deal with that. And and the only way I the only way I can see is that as that we've got to securitize this problem. Computer security industry is, is, you know, it's been engaged in outrageous securitization for a very long period of time. <laughs> the solution is so as self press six, it's like, we must securitize it. <laughs> <laughs> people must, like, if people don't know what to do. And he's also projecting to like, the people don't know what to do about it. It's like, honey, the people don't even know this is happening. Like, <laughs> maybe more people will know now after this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he has high, uh, he's overestimating the public knowledge. <laughs> he's like, yeah, if, of course you know about this. <laughs> the next step is now what to do about it. <laughs> <laughs> like if you can get through people, yeah, to, to people that this is happening. Um, <sighs> typing out the threats, etc. I get how the game is played. Uh, it needs to be securitized in a different I get how the game is played. So that does speak to him having like a five or an eight influence, I feel like, because that is like sort of mm -hmm. you're conscious that, like you said at the beginning, that we're on a chessboard, that this we are pawns, there are chess Pete, there are people outside of the chessboard that are controlling this game and Right. Yeah, that's like a rejection. It's the tendency to gamify or to um, kind of just block people into what they are particularly doing to you. Like it's, um, it's, it's almost a defensive way of seeing the world. Um, uh, it, it just kind of depersonalizes, um, people in, in, in how they, how you view them and how they can affect you. And I, I think that goes for all of the, uh, rejection types in the Enneagram, which, I don't know if you want to explain what rejection means for the Enneagram, but. Yeah, I think you kind of did it already. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he has an eight at all, though. If we're going to talk Enneagram, I think he has a, a heavy nine fix if he's a six. Because mm -hmm. he is, he could be way, I feel like if I was in his place, I would be way more erratic about it all. And he's like pretty, he's pretty muted. Just like, um, he's not heads on. He, he's not like um, emotional. Yeah. Yeah, I think nine in the gut center. And then uh, we've already talked before we started this call that he would be a three wing two in the heart center, heart center last. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. would make him, if he's nine wing one in the, in the gut center, then that would mean that he's a, a six, nine, three. I know this might be a lot for people who aren't used to the Enneagram. It's a trifixation. His trifixation would be six, nine, three. And his shadow type would actually be um, five, uh, one, two. So then he would have um, 
a triple super ego, if you will, uh, which means that he has each of the three types that feels like somehow responsible for like society, like you should be doing these things. These are the right things to do. Um, there's like this orientation to following rule, like that not to say that they follow the rules because they can break the rules, but there is an orientation to the rules existing, if you will. Different way. We need to securitize the, <laughs> as I mean, you turn something into a threat and thereby change behavior or get economic gain from it. Um, so we need to securitize <laughs> the threat. Turn this into a, a song like by <laughs> these developers. <laughs> the people who run these companies it's a threat to them it's a, it's a, it's a threat to the most powerful people in society and to eliminate the notion that there's a place that powerful people can hide from or skilled people can hide from this phenomenon uh, and that's the way to get uh, all those people who have an ability to make a difference to make a difference yeah and that's six as fuck <laughs> it's like take a shot every time he's a securitized or threat yeah or, and also or the, the elite oh yeah and that again that's well that's a reactive thing too like and that does point to also rejection like the threat to the whatever he's conceiving um which again that is an eight thing too but yeah like we said he's unlikely to have eight in his typing um but, and we can take a moment just to honor how hot he is for a nerd <laughs> Oh yeah, the, the red tie, the like right red corner, sorry, the right uh, bottom corner. <laughs> you know, like a little ghost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tasty. He's like a silver fox. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's not a fox, he's like a wet ferret. <laughs> <laughs> You know what though, I weirdly noticed with some of the the like Caucasian six wing fives, they do actually weirdly look really pale and like on uh, like <laughs> and like. <laughs> you never yeah, Dylan, seen them. Dylan Moran. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like because they're just eating Mr. Noodles and ale or something. It's... <laughs> Still, these yeah. guys, these guys aren't surfing exactly. They're not surfing. Like, this is pretty weird. I didn't even know that this happened. I'm kind of curious to watch it, even though we, if there is a video somewhere. Um, Lady Gaga is like, I'm pretty sure in the Illuminati. So um, you're, she didn't pass your six wing five bullshit detector, Julian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we can look at his quotes. And this was also where I started when I was relooking at his quotes. I was like, oh no, these are pretty sexy. Veronica is probably on the money with me a six. Um, um, media is a big problem around the world. It's powerful and can abuse its power. Yes, that's true. What we know is everything. It is our limit or what we can be. Oh, that's like a head type quote big time. So yeah, head type is five, six, and seven for people watching. Um, if wars can be started with lies, they can be stopped by truth. <laughs> I feel like this is even this is a bit too idealist for a six. I feel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but that is this like, kind of motivation too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, truth, yeah. We must discover the truth. We must expose the lies to get to the truth. Like, <laughs> right. Oh, look at this. I'm pretty hard to kill, and I come from a very long-lived family line. I'm quite adaptable. Oh, that's a nice. That's like that's like the nine, um, nine six resilience. Nine six three in particular, like or six nine three, that tri type. Oh, that's yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, like any time, like six nine three sees themselves as a part of the lineage, like these, and they also are referencing back to their their context where they're coming from you know um who they are in the line of people that led up to them yeah why do you not see nine wing eight uh why nine wing one because nine wing eight also has that kind of like i'm a i'm a i'm invincible i'll just yeah i did i did consider nine 
wing eight for his gut center. Um, yeah, but he has kind of a finesse to the way he interacts with others that I don't feel like, um, I feel like it's more nine wing one and it's more of the idealism piece rather than the um, nine wing eight kind of archetypal, just about me. It, it, like nine wing eights are very, just almost don't bother me. Don't infringe on me. It, it's just it's more self-focused. I feel like. Mm -hmm. He's also teachery. So notice there's a, a, usually one influence on people who are kind of teachery. I mean, there's obviously exceptions, but, but yeah, he does have a kind of droopy, uh, what did you say? <laughs> Was Veronica like a log or something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he seems, I mean, as far as like introversion goes, he seems quite introverted, um, quite low energy. But, oh, yeah, very. But that doesn't always necessarily mean um, withdrawn as a Enneagram. Like we have to be careful about using those interchangeably with introversion um, because it means something specific, specific to the Enneagram, which is um, just a more like the you go into yourself to get what you need rather than outside of yourself. So here's <laughs> also what I found where I was like, oh, okay, Julian Assange, the whistleblower. <laughs> so once again, to circle back to the six archetype. And I was like, I'm going to know there's other whistleblowers that are not sixes. I do know this, but, um, but uh, it is, it is, the six is the whistleblower. <laughs> Also, I think like self pres six wing fives, just to be superficial for a second. He does have like that kind of nine wing one poise, but he's also kind of sloppy and like he looks like a kind of grungy professor or something, which I think is like. Yeah, he dresses terribly, let's be honest. <laughs> I'm hot. I think how he dresses, but I like grungy, gross guy, like guys that look like they don't bathe. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like SPs are just like comfort. Like, okay, I'm gonna be comfortable, you know. Yes. So it's like social, social as an instinct is gonna be like a little bit more aware of how they're being perceived, no matter what their their um, enneagram type is. Yeah, that's a good point. I like to show up for all these zooms that we do. Uh, like, I'm aware from the top underneath I'm wearing, but on the bottom I'm wearing sweats. Social on the top, self pres on the bottom. Okay. Very pleased to be amongst so many people I can respect. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, this is like a subscribe of my people. <laughs> I can respect so, that. Finally, people I can respect. Like, I think, yeah, that's a bit too sassy for nine. That's, or like nine is not going to have the respect part too. I think six is like, you got to earn my respect. Nine is like, oh, we're all people. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't have reasons to hate you. Like, unless you give me something to hate you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a little wing five hubris, I think. <laughs> I love this. In a room uh, with so many people that I think hold uh, to my values. Uh, that is real. Mm. Values, yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm very grateful to your, um, the organizers for inviting everyone and me. And I see uh, in the front row, um, we have Anwar Ibrahim, uh, who I met um, in Malaysia last year uh, at a by-election uh, for the opposition. Uh, just after uh, speaking to Amwa a few hours later that night, um, I was detained by the secret police in Malaysia. So, I mean, and he's doing that little six flex of like, I was a bad boy. <laughs> when you speak to him, be careful. <clears throat> so we've heard a lot here about the problems in the developing world. And uh, in, in the work that I have done, uh, certainly um, I have covered many of those uh, and we are censored in all the, the rogues gallery states, of China, Iran, um, Israel. But I think what he's saying is, is um, really interesting because it seems like six is like part of the reactivity is just not like this emotional instability. It's about like, okay, here's the problem 
let's talk about it, you know? And he immediately goes into, well, this is the problem. And the competency aspect is like, okay, now let's solve it. Um, let's do something in the SP part is in a practical way. Let's talk about the tangibles. Yeah. So I think like very easily, um, you can see a lot of aspects of his personality coming out just in the first few things that he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is too, it's like, there's levels of the levels of health for a six two where when they're at lower levels of health, that is when they are like being <laughs> like, <laughs> like, just sort of like the joke or the meme of a six, uh, the pendulum swinging back and forth, like, daddy, I love you. Daddy, I hate you. <laughs> but when they're at higher levels of health, they're like leaders and they can <laughs> because they have access to that like that citizen i'm the citizen i'm the global citizen and they know what the people want and they know how to speak to the people and whatever and it's like they're able to calmly and confidently trust themselves and step into that powerful aspect um yeah definitely i i think this is the gift of six um to be able to say things in a way that bring truth and revelation to the community and um, the reactivity at the high levels is, is not going to be a, about like making things overblown or just being nuts. It's about laying out the truth and laying out um, what needs to be said and what needs to be addressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause we can talk about that for a second too, where it's like, like the six at a healthy level that's whistleblowing or calling stuff out is doing it more from this kind of perspective where it's like, um, you know, speaking truth to power, like, like exposing people, but from like a strategic cons like, uh, kind of calm place. But then you can see other whistleblowers that get like, that kind of go ah, like insane. And they, and they start accusing people of things that they didn't do. They're making up stories. Um, I mean, and, and we've seen that play out in culture quite a lot recently. And probably a lot of those people were unhealthy sixes with unhealthy. Maybe Alex Jones too, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. my, my favorite of all the sixes, Alex Jones, but he, but he gets riled up because like, I, I believe in what he's doing, um, and we will be covering him in a video, or the people who want to be in that video, it might be a solo venture, we'll see. Um, but he gets really riled up, but he's got an eight fix, too, so he's got double reactive, but he gets, he, he wilds the fuck out. Um, because... I, but it's because you can he gets upset because it's like people aren't listening and that's when he gets even more wound up and i think that's also like a, an attachment or adapt, adaptation type thing where it's like if if you actually do speak out about something and the tribe is not mirroring it back to you it can feel very isolating and horrifying and but i mean i watch i watch band dot video semi-frequently i don't watch any that much anymore because it gives me a headache but um but like when he talks about people are listening to him, he's actually, he's really like embodying like the highest six virtues, if you will. And it's, and, and it's actually, I, I find it touching and beautiful because it's like, they're they're and they're, and they're also humble. Like, I mean, with a wing five, you're <laughs> you got a little bit of intellectual hubris, but it's a more humble type to lead because the, maybe deep down they want glory on some level, but it's like, it is more about like, it's you helped. We all did it together. We're all in it together. Yeah. And it's, it's a, it's the cause. Like it's the, the, what the work speaks for itself. Like he, it's it just, um, sixes can, can tend to like deep platform themselves a little bit. But, <laughs> <laughs> in <the kind> of <laughs> but um, I, that can also be a great thing because he's he's not making it about his personality, about who he is. He's making it about the work. He's making it about what he's doing. And um, I mean, that is like a wonderful thing about, about sixes is, is they make it about the work. Oh, I love that. Dropping nuggets. 
Probably nines too, but I think six is more. Or maybe nines don't do any work. No, I'm just, whatever. Just kidding. <laughs> Well, like if we're talking about different kinds of whistleblowers, and I did consider this, like, <laughs> um, I think nines are calling out a different, like, it's not the information that concerns them as much. They're interested in how people are connecting to the world, how they're connecting to each other. Um, they're worried about isolation. They're worried about the circumstances that people find themselves in in like a nine wing one is going to talk about look at so and so like look at the situation look at their lives look look how they have to do this and this and this and um i think the sixth locus of control is specifically about the knowledge the information the institutional ways that we receive knowledge and how that impacts our lives um in the broader sense mm -hmm. Yeah, and we could even like think about how some of the other types would would be whistleblowers. I was also trying to think about, like, I don't know if you could call Russell Brand a whistleblower per se, but he definitely turned on the establishment. He's like the biggest seven ever. Um, mm -hmm. and it's like he turned on Hollywood. Like he, like I mean, he was always a provocateur, anyways. Um, I didn't like him until he actually started speaking out about stuff that's going on in the planet, but. But he's made it like his mission now, like he's exposing people left and right. And he I mean, he does it with like a jester quality where he's like making it kind of fun, making it funny and asking questions. And like, um, mm -hmm. so there's like a levity to everything that he's doing, even though he's talking about quite dark stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Like sevens can be amazing cultural critics. I also think of like Alan Moore, um, who's perhaps like seven, nine area. Um, Five. He could be, um, but in either way, like he's a different type. He's not a six for sure. And um, he's also kind of like exposing aspects of culture that need to be, to be talked about. So. Yeah, I could see him being a five wing four. Um... There's a lot of overlap between five wing fours and, and sevens in, in the way they, are approaching um i think it's the influence of frustration versus and in a conceptual way oh yeah that's good yeah and i guess like the motivation too for like a seven to be a whistleblower if you will is probably because you did something that personally affected them like i hate to admit this but it's like i was never political i don't care i mean i, I hate that i've had to like even <laughs> into any of this but it's like oh damn these mo these these one percent motherfuckers are ruining my life now all right bitches you just like made an enemy and now i'm going to be <laughs> learning how the mind works learning how propaganda works learning how the enneagram works and i'm going to use it to take you down <laughs> because you messed up my life you messed up my fun your social engineering screwed up my enjoyment of life and now you're going to suffer so anyways don't mess with frustration types. Because <laughs> once we get yeah, our deck, <laughs> we will sink our teeth into you and we won't let go until we've bitten it off. <laughs> right. Yeah. And like ones can be cultural critics. Of course, they do. They do that due diligence as well. And they're um, tend to be lofty preachers of, you know, the moral rights, the, the ways of the, that things should be from a very idealistic place. And what's interesting about Julian Assange is that he never really talks too much about the way things should be as much like he's saying, this is the way things are. I'm exposing it. Would a three be a whistleblower? Well, I think that would be like the last one, uh, the last type to be a whistleblower, but there would have to be like a social gain, probably. They'd have to get a job. They whistleblow about the person whose job they want. <laughs> yeah. Like there's a specific motivation to to do it for themselves. Yeah. And then, yeah, one is like what you said. It's like the here's what you should be doing. Oh, they see the bad man. It's a super ego bad man thing, but they're that's improper. Um, mm -hmm. Twos. Like I could see a two being a whistleblower with like, if they had like more punchy fixes, like. Yeah, it could be like if someone was exploited or if like 
children were being hurt. I bet you there was some twos on the whole front line of the Catholic church, um, covering up the, uh, um, assault of teenage boys. So. Ugh, yeah. I'm I bet like you a lot of nines and twos were involved in that because the innocent being exploited is going to be a real big problem for nines and twos as well as sixes. Yeah, it's because it says the underdog thing. And then even maybe eights, like a, a high level of health eight. <laughs> um, wouldn't want to see people be exploited, but. Um, and you have like uh, Muhammad Ali isn't really like a whistleblower, but he, he moralizes. A lot. He has a lot of interviews where he's just like moralizing, telling people they're not seeing the truth and that corporations are doing that or the government is doing this and that, so. If I had to categorize the kind of whistleblowers, I would say like frustration types are going to be like critics mm. um, pointing out what's wrong um, that and then like the positive types, probably more along the lines of like, this is the way that the world should be. Um, you know, let's strive for this beautiful world that we envision together. And that's not really a whistleblower, but they're, they're kind of putting out there what needs to be done um, to make the world a better place. And then, or an yeah, image, like a, like an image, yeah. a visualization of what the ideal world is. Uh, yes. Right. But I think the whistleblower particularly is just that archetype is so very six because, um, like they're wanting to call out the authority on a matter. That's what, it, I mean, that's going to be the sixth um, thing and that's going to trigger them the most. Yeah, and I think like Julian, I just did a quick cursory search uh, to see if Julian Assange had been typed in any of the Enneagram things. And I think people typed him as a five, but like you made a good point about the whistleblower thing because it's like fives really... I don't think would feel as compelled to whistleblow like they would just be more like kind of like criticizing from a distance or something and not really engaging with it so it's more just like oh, look at what these fuckers are doing okay well I'm, i've got my own things that i'm doing so you can deal with it or not <laughs> yeah i mean they they could incidentally just put out stuff there that shows the the real situation and i don't think like they have no problem doing that um but to its relevancy to in a moral and even a slight moral sense, it's going to be less. Yeah. Or legitimacy. Like sixes are concerned with legitimacy of authority, legitimacy of uh, information and um, or data. And fives are not as concerned with legitimacy as a uh, utility to them personally. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And it's back to like that sort of, I think on either side of like the head types, it's like fives and sevens. It's more like, does this directly affecting me? Like, mm -hmm. well, it is, then they don't, <laughs> not as likely to care as much. Unless it's like a really juicy thing that they can sink their teeth into, like mentally, where it's like mentally exciting. Bomb dropping. Like, bom like, like sevens like to drop the bomb of information because it makes a splash. It does something for them, you know? He's yeah. like, oh, here's the information bomb. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah it has to be provocative in a, in a yeah, personally provocative. And maybe on some level, it's like that for fives, like where they'd have to get, yeah, they'd have to get juice out of it somehow. Bring it on. You can watch Bring It On. U.S. government, uh, in terms of its attack on WikiLeaks. Yeah, look at that hairstyle. It's trying to <laughs> yeah, construct. It's kind a of theory. a SP six wing five or SP nine wing eight hairstyle. That's like a, a Hobbit archer kind of thing going <laughs> medieval. Anyways. Oh yeah, I guess that could be like the SP nine wing one, uh, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a vibe. <laughs> With a vibe. <laughs> which if permitted, uh, will be the end of national security journalism, uh, not just in the United States, but also about the United States. Yeah, I also just, I feel like the more translucent the skin, the more five there is in someone's personality. <laughs> <laughs> that um, claim is that uh, journalists can't solicit information from sources and to solicit information uh, is to uh, 
be involved in a conspiracy. And accomplice and, and, conspiracy. Yeah, and the, and the United States in terms of the charge types uh, that it's trying to uh, uh, charge me with. Uh, those include conspiracy and conspiracy to commit espionage. Uh, this is rubbish. Uh, we, we cannot tolerate this at the political level or the media level. If we do tolerate it, then uh, that standard will be erected. Now, what happens in... Pre <laughs> Some super ego stuff right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's, he's even if he's not social, he's saying we. We shouldn't tolerate. We can't abide this, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Practice. How does traditional investigative journalism work? Uh, will you hear uh, a rumor about some event occurring, let's say it's a, an assassination squad assassinating people. You hear a rumor that there had, might have been an event and you go and speak to your sources or perhaps one approaches you and say, I heard that this happened. And then you say, um, well, that's good, uh, but we need to be able to prove it. Uh, so do you have information that can prove it? Uh, and then they say, well, I think I might have some report uh, on the incident. Uh, and then you say, well, that's, that's good. Um, can we have that report? Can we see that report? And that's the way journalism has always been done. Uh, now, the US DOJ. I believe in what he's doing, but boy, I have, I, I left my body. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't leave my body. Maybe that's proof of six. I'm like, yes, give me, I want the, I want the nitty gritty. <laughs> Yeah, do you want to go on like a, a U.S. government rant, <laughs> Victoria? Oh God, where do I start? <laughs> oh my Lord, um, everything, everything you believe is most of everything you believe, even as an educated, in the educated class. Like, let's say ninety percent of it was the narrative was created by the U.S. government. Everything about everything, everything you believe about everything. Anyways, I don't know. This is this can sum it up. <laughs> yeah, I'm the only U.S. citizen on this call. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys know who Neil Postman is. Have you heard of that name? He talked about the trends of media and information um, over the past decades until recently, and basically um it's becoming more and more consolidated and narratives are becoming more and more um like handed down this is what we're going to talk about this is what the algorithm is going to choose and let's just focus on these core stories for the week or for the day whatever the case is so there's like a a, a way that these information streams are like further and further narrowing and becoming more and more manipulated by um, outside influence. Um, and this is of course, because um, the media is owned by corporations and um, CEOs, and those are also entangled with government in certain ways. So um, it's just like a tainted, it, it's tainted information at all times. Like there's, there's hardly any way to get for the for the uh, U.S. citizen to get information that is not tainted by propaganda or tainted by um, how it's going to be received by the public. So it's, it's just a, this is something I feel like is very, is one of the more important things about if we're going to hold the idea of a democracy. Um, this is one of the more important things that really uh, give us the ability to even discern what issues need to be addressed in a democracy because the whole thing is being constructed and manipulated by the one percent <laughs> yeah sorry that as was a, weird a little bit <laughs> yeah as a just as like a disclaimer i think like all three of us have different like political views uh but like i think we all have over, like good overlap in terms of like anti-corporation anti-government and thinking and on understanding or believing that uh the government is basically five corporations in a in a trench coat mm. oh i like that that's a great 
yeah they're all like again like i've never been into politics so this is all pretty fresh to me freshly horrifying but it seems like it's who who's at the very top i mean i think there's competing i think there's competing people it's sort of like a like a small group of insanely wealthy uh families who hide in the shadows and i also mm-hmm. think that it's like the upper like the the government like the, the deep state if you will the um the pentagon the cia like all of these things uh and you know and they've been doing all kinds of shit to the public forever um i'm more interested in like the human behavioral stuff that they've done to people uh you know like mk ultra and stuff like that but uh we've been mk ultra like we are literally mk ultra by our tvs like we're mk ultra by tiktok we're mk ultra by instagram like the fact that they like they literally the the one percent or the deep state or whoever's up there the ccp whoever it is uh they're all working either <laughs> together in conjunction because they all want the same thing um, in my mind they're all going to end up duking it out at the end um if they get far enough and so it's like they are socially engineering us by controlling the flow of information because you're react like most people are reacting to information and if they're and you're only getting this kind of information that's all that's like shaping your reality like or not everybody obviously like not people who actually <laughs> think um or <laughs> pay attention i guess but it's like we're being socially engineered by them withholding information and amplifying other information and that is through the government through the TV, through the TikTok, through the internet, through news. Like right now in Canada, it's like no one even pays attention to what's happening that they've passed. Has it already passed? It's like they've been passing the censorship bill where basically Trudeau, who has openly said he admires uh, the CCP's model uh, of dictatorship, um, that he's trying to now uh, make it legal for the Canadian government to control our news and what we see and upload to the internet. And no one seems to fucking care because they think it's going to somehow benefit them. It'll boost Canadian content. First of all, if you make good enough content and art, you wouldn't have to have the government uh, do that for you. So maybe uh, if you think you're going to benefit from that, then you should actually go back to like like uh, learning some talent, learning some skill. Actually, you can't learn talent. So some of your hopeless. Anyways, I'm going to step off my soap. <laughs> um, yeah, that's grim. Yeah, let's watch that. <laughs> I say... So this generation, or that perhaps our generation, but anyway, this generation being born now, uh, in in seconds in most countries, oh, sorry, very shortly in most countries, and it's already happened in in say China, most European countries, the United States, is is the last free generation. Uh, you're born, and either immediately or within say a year. Uh, you are known globally. Your your identity in one form or another, coming as a result of your idiotic parents, uh, <laughs> part, part your name and photos on your Facebook, uh, or as a result of insurance applications or passport applications, uh, transport uh, on airlines, etc. You you are known to all the world's major powers, all the world's major. Uh, state powers and all the world's major commercial powers. That's a very different situation for individuals to be in than they have previously been in. That that a small child now, in some sense, has to to negotiate its relationship with all the world's major powers. Of of course, in practice, it can't do anything. Its parents are, are uh, not managing that negotiation, but it put, put, puts us in a, I think, a very different position in, in the sense that very few, in fact, maybe only a few people in this audience, very technical, ca- technically capable people, uh, are, are able to no longer, able to live apart, to choose to live apart, to choose to go their own way. They must be part of not only the state, but the major state-like corporations, so powerful, they may as well be states, uh, and not just their own state, but other states as well. That's a, a significant change, cultural change for humanity. So this concludes the first video in the Masters of War, War series, and this was 
Heroes of the Apocalypse with Julian Assange. Want me roll it? <laughs> Don't worry, this won't be put on the internet. <laughs> I promise. <laughs>